Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri. Wait a second. Okay, this is better. So, iOS versus Android. Why does it have to be always such an aggressive debate? Just stick to what you love, right? Apples versus oranges. Join the dark side. No, 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 no. Join our. Wait, wait, wait. Which one of you is the dark side? So interestingly, I've been using both the iPhone and Android together on a daily basis because they sort of complement each other and fill in the blanks that the other ecosystem lacks. So let's talk about that and why this is a mere a conversation that needs to happen. Let's put our fanboyism aside right after this. It's time to try something new with the K900M mechanical keyboard by Zalman with Kale Brown switches, onboard macro recordings and absolutely gorgeous RGB illumination with the white frame. Even your dog will go nuts. Check it out in the description below. All right, so the Apple Keynote is over and many Android users will realize that some of the new features that Apple is rolling out with the iOS and the new iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 have been available on Android for over two years. Years. We're enabling the freedom of wireless charging. There's 458 pixels per inch. It's remarkable how this larger display can be packed into a phone that fits so comfortably in our hands. Meanwhile, the screen covers 80% of the body, yielding thinner bezels at the top. Well, now that that's over, you can get a haircut. All right, new hair, feeling good. But let's be real, neither ecosystem is perfect and we as users are very good to adopt to the compromises of either dark side. So if you are potentially thinking of switching to one of these two, this video is for you and I got a few surprises, guest surprises along the way. So I have used my iPhone 7 for six months on a daily basis and I have not yet gotten impatient as I did with my Galaxy S7 six months in using this device. The Galaxy S7 just kind of got laggy. Things were just not uh, as stable or smooth as they used to be and I had to format it every three months in order to get that fresh feeling back. And my most recent go-to Android device has been the OnePlus 5. I love how fast it is. Updates have been very consistent. I do love the portrait mode camera on this phone and the new rose gold color is a pretty unique addition to my smartphone collection. My least favorite thing about Android has to be the inconsistencies between the devices. So take example screens. On some they're warmer, on others they're cooler. And for people like me, having a calibrated and accurate screen is important because what we put out is what we want the viewer to see. And that, that just annoys me. And so these hardware differences between Android devices is a pretty big deal, like the inverted display on the OnePlus 5 that makes a jelly effect, plus the screen touch latency on the OnePlus 5 is far worse versus my Galaxy S7, and even the early version on the OnePlus 3, which I'm keeping, it's my favorite OnePlus device, doesn't have that much screen latency as the OnePlus 5 does. So what's going on? And that's why I love the iPhone, not just the 7, the 5S, and early versions that have no touch screen latency, so when you physically press the screen, that interrupts interaction is instantaneous and doesn't feel there's something happening in the background that's stalling that physical touch on the screen. My least favorite thing about Android is the app instability that I experience sometimes. So a quick example would be if I were to change the lights of my hue bulbs in my studio, uh, the app would crash on me. I've had that in multiple devices, including my G6 and the Note 8. It's little things like that that just makes me want to switch to another platform, but it's very minimal and it doesn't happen every time. It's just that one time that you really wanted to work, it just wouldn't. So there you have it. What's up everybody, this is Danny. Android's biggest strength is probably their biggest weakness. There are so many different manufacturers making Android devices that when the new version of Android comes out, it has the latest and greatest innovations pushing mobile forward. And you may not even get that on your smartphone for six months or you might not even get it at all. So the uniformity on the platform is not there. And I think that's its biggest, biggest weakness. Now I can't speak for other brands, but I've been pretty happy with how fast OnePlus has been rolling out updates. And primarily because people were pissed that some of these things were not included, like stabilization in 4K video now has been added and it's pretty good. And the portrait mode has gotten so good that it's becoming my primary tool for capturing product photography for social media. And all of them look fantastic, almost like a DSLR shot. I'd say my least favorite thing about Android is that it's not iOS what I need it to be. So oftentimes developers will optimize their app for iOS over Android and when I need to use those apps uh, it can be frustrating um, that it doesn't work properly simply because I don't have the right phone. My least favorite thing about the software is that there are still some apps 
that I cannot delete. Mm -hmm. Even though I will never use them. Mm -hmm. Like stocks. I don't have stocks. Hello, I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, and my favorite thing about iOS has got to be the stability of the platform. No, it's not as exciting as Android, and no, it's not as customizable, but the last time I had to reboot my phone because something went weird was like three years ago. My favorite thing about iOS devices is not iOS, it's the fact that you can get consistency between the hardware, so you always are assured of having a good camera, having a good calibrated screen, and having good sound and app, which is something that you honestly just can't find as easy on Android devices. Hey, Dave2D here. So my favorite thing about iOS is probably iMessage and just the whole iMessage ecosystem. A lot of my family and friends use that thing, so when I don't have that thing, I feel like feel like removed from my family and friends. But when I have it, I feel like I'm part of the gang. And the thing that I love about iOS is that it is consistent and fast. So it may be a simple experience, but you know what you're gonna get. It remains fast and you get updates on older phones. So you get the new experience, even if you don't buy the new phone, which you can't get on Android a lot of times. Hi, I'm Matthew Moniz, and the one thing that I love about iOS is the fact that I can use 3D Touch to move the cursor around anywhere on the screen. I find this to be a little bit easier than tapping with your finger. So 3D Touch is a unique feature, but I feel it's underutilized. I use it to quickly access uh, my steps counter from the health app or writing a tweet, but surprisingly my most used 3D Touch uh, selections is like choosing the flashlight brightness. You can also set a timer and also selecting slow motion video without entering the app first. But it's also really funny how that uniform experience is very much associated with the lack of the customization that Android seems to fulfill so well. And I find it bizarre that icons are still locked for that top to bottom grid and cannot be moved otherwise. Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and my favorite thing about Android has to be the sheer amount of customization. My favorite feature about Android is the ability to customize. My favorite thing about Android, of course, has to be the customization. You can take a horribly ugly Android skin. You have the ability to add your own launcher, your own icon packs, add your own widgets if you like. Honestly, if you don't like something, get rid of it and you can tailor it exactly the way you want it, so it works the way that you want your system to work. I would say that the thing that I dislike the most about Android is, I know this sounds petty, but the default launcher, like if you put apps into a folder, it's like a hole and you can look into the hole and you can see all the folders in there. It just looks really messy to me. I think my favorite thing about Android is the seamless integration with Google. I use Google applications all the time on a, on a regular basis for work and for personal use. So it's very important to me that the platform I use on my phone uh, fully supports and integrates seamlessly with those frequently used applications. I love Android, but my least favorite thing about it has got to be third-party app stability. I know it's not really Android's fault, but if you tried to use applications like Snapchat on Android, it's a disaster. They just run much more stably on iOS. And of course, there are many reasons why iOS gets the hate, like not being able to change the resolution or settings of your camera within the default camera app. Widget selection is terrible. You know, I cannot put a visual steps counter from the health app, but for some reason I can put the who's viewed my profile from LinkedIn. Why? Why is that a feature? On Twitter, when opening YouTube links, it opens it in its own Twitter browser, and then you have to go into the open in Safari tab in order to view that video in the YouTube app. On Android, it obviously knows that you have the YouTube app installed and opens it in there right away, the way it should be. Sharing pictures to Instagram gives me no customization options. It simply publishes the image without any tweaking tools available unless I open the app first and add the image that way. On Android, of course, sharing a photo to Instagram means it opens up the app with the selected photo, which is far more convenient. My least favorite thing about iOS has to be iOS itself. Honestly, I find it super restrictive. I find it clunky to operate. And honestly, for me, I just don't think it's well designed. I know, cue the hate, but that's what it is. And my least favorite thing about iOS has to be notifications. They used to be really easy to understand, very simple, but now they're really complex, very confusing, and Apple needs to fix them as soon as possible. So the notification system is by far the worst thing about iOS. First, none of the notifications are grouped. So if you receive 50 one word messages, they all show up individually. So it's a nightmare for socially engaged individuals. Imagine being part of five active Facebook chats, four WhatsApp groups, 
to Twitter accounts for email addresses every morning when I wake up and have to scroll through all the little things that pop up is just a complete nightmare. Not only that, but once you unlock your iPhone, all the notifications disappear from the lock screen. They can still be found when you unlock the device. And for me, having that reminder on a lock screen that an email still needs a response is a good chance that I will not forget and accidentally remove the notification. With Android, on the other hand, everything is grouped beautifully by multiple email addresses, by different Twitter accounts, and each notification can still be opened and dismissed individually, which is a fantastic tool for productivity. It really boggles my mind that Apple engineers thought that that was the best way to handle notifications, at least group them please. As for Siri versus Google Assistant, aside from setting up my alarms, uh, I don't use them for anything else. So both are good in their regard. You just have to make sure to say the right thing, set an alarm instead of ring an alarm because both systems will get confused. I do love the seamless approach to AirDrop on the iPhone. So sharing my pictures and videos wirelessly with my Mac without needing to access the cloud or connect any wires. I also love the search function that you can access by swiping down. It's super convenient. And as a phone, the vibration motor on the iPhone is by far the best I've experienced. And unlike on my Android, I've never had to shut down my iPhone because something was not working. I've never experienced an app crash. And the only time I've had something lagging was in a really hot temperature with the camera camera. When I'm swiping from the right, it would just kind of get stuck like this as what happened there. But that usually happens in a very warm environment and uh, maybe like once out of every 20 times in a normal scenario. And seriously, my favorite thing about Android is that notification system that keeps me on track. I know it has to be done uh, in terms of responses. And I also love the massive rollout of uh, quick charging, fast charging and dash charging for OnePlus, for example, that uh, gets the battery to recharge super fast because recharging the iPhone is painfully slow. Now the introduction of the new iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus seem a little bit underwhelming despite you know wireless charging, glass back and new dual uh, cameras with a really awesome portrait mode while the iPhone 10 looks cool, but man, that price point is just insane. And if you have been considering buying an iPhone, perhaps wait for discounts on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus or there'll be many uh, for sale secondhand for the 7 7 Plus who are trying to upgrade for the newer versions of the iPhone. So now is a good time to buy. And so I hope this video has been helpful in trying to understand why people love the iPhone, why people love Android, and why those two ecosystems are constantly clashing. It's a weird relationship because they complement each other so well, as in filling in the gaps of certain features that the other ecosystem uh, lacks. What's your favorite thing about the iPhone? The interface. The interface? Yes. What do you mean? I like that it's really simple. There isn't a thousand things on it. There's just as much stuff that I want. The new Corsair Void Pro gaming headset is comfortable, stylish in different colors, delivers fantastic wireless performance even for competitive gaming with an all new microphone for clear communications. Check out the Void Pro Wireless or Wired in the description below. So let me know what's your favorite feature about the ecosystem that you're rocking in the comments below. I'd like to thank our contributors for this video. Uh, they're all linked in the description below if you want to check out their channels. Make sure to subscribe and check out these other relevant videos and we'll see you in the next one. I'm still here. <laughs>